Heavenly Father, as we come boldly to your throne, the only way we know how, Jesus Christ is Lord. And Heavenly Father, as we plead your holy and precious blood, Father God, we thank you. That Lord Jesus Christ, as we lift up your name, you are the Messiah. You are God's perfect sacrifice, his one and only beloved son. And through you, Lord Jesus Christ, and only through you, through the anointing and the presence of your Holy Spirit in every beloved child, you have sealed us as one in you. And Father, I just thank you right now that, Holy Spirit, you are our only teacher. We only look to one man, and that is you, Lord Jesus Christ, and every message, every word, everything we do here at your beloved church, Open Arms Community Church, all we do is for all your glory, Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, bless this worship. Holy Spirit, speak to us. And in your presence, Father God, I ask you, change me, Lord. I want to be everything that you paid for, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want to shortchange you for nothing. Then, Father God, I want you to live abundantly through me. I want you to live abundantly through my marriage. I want you to live abundantly through my house, through my children, through my church. Because you are my Lord, my Savior, my Lord Jesus Christ. And Father God, we lift up the name above every name. Holy Spirit, have your way a fresh anointing from heaven, Father. And I thank you, Father, that as your light shines, your presence pushes evil far, far, far away from us. That you destroy the plots of the evil one. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are coming back for us soon. And it's in Jesus Christ's name and all God's beloved said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Praise God. God's good? All the time. All the time. All and just keep getting gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. I love you so much. I love praise God. Let me. Hallelujah. Well, I, I know many of you have seen the pictures. Um, the, the worship service is titled today, Bear Fruit. Amen? <laughs> Say that with me, Bear Fruit. Bear Fruit. Now, it gets gooder and gooder, amen? And I'm going to tell you, we got a lot to go through. Praise God, a lot to go through. All I ask, uh, all I ask is, let's just trust in Lord Jesus Christ, amen? amen? Here, let me help you. Can I help you? However you came in today, you're not going to leave the same. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Hallelujah! Right, Brother Randall? Have you ever gone to a restaurant? What's your favorite restaurant? Right? Just anybody. What's your favorite restaurant? Just Golden Crook. Hallelujah! Sister after Long Court, right there. Praise God. What else? Cattlemen? Yeah. Woo. Praise God. Brother Jim's treaty. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a little too expensive for me, but I don't believe in God. Praise God, right? So how many of you, when you got to the restaurant, right, you come. Come on now. Preach it, Pastor. Hungry. Hangry. Huh? Have you ever been hangry? <laughs> right? Have you ever been hangry where you're like, I'm not even acting right? Trish goes, you're embarrassing me. Act right. You preach it all the time. Act right. You're going to get fed. Just stop acting that way, right? That's being hangry, right? Now, when you go into the establishment, do you leave hangry? Oh, oh, come on, my beloved family. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, you are not going to leave hungry today. Can I get an amen? Let's keep God praying, amen? Hallelujah, not. Oh, praise God. Which means, my beloved sister said, Golden. Lord Jesus Christ said it is paid in full. Every blessing you want right now. So there's some of you believing for God to touch your finances. I'm going to tell you this week, I ministered to a bunch of people right now. And I'm going to tell you right now, I got a lot of them upset. Because they're, they're talking about, well, Brother Joey, I just don't got the money. I can't never get ahead. This is the question that Holy Spirit has me asked 10 out of 10 times. Are you giving God his money? Rebuke that in Jesus' name. Can you say that to me? Rebuke that. Yeah. 
beloved child of mine, just give me what's mine. Amen. See, there's something that needed to hear that today. The reason why the enemy has his grubby paws all over God's money is because the heart behind it. We made the money a God. I'm going to ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, say with me, no more. No more. Some of you came in needing healing. You heard it many, many times this morning. We haven't even gotten to the worship service. God is our great physician. Amen. And I need you to meditate on this fact and this fact alone. What can come against the blood of God? Amen. Can COVID come against the blood of God? No. Can cancer come against no. the blood of God? No. So in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, even if you say, oh, well, I got this going on, I got, I've been dealing with this for you, it doesn't matter. Amen. Say it with me, today is a new day. Lives in God. Oh, I get gooder and gooder. 
and God in them. And as you know, that is the resurrection power of Holy Spirit. Say it with me, agape. Agape. Father, agape. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Father, Son. And that's the picture that you see in the storybook, in the storyline. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And God lives in you and in me. Can I hear an amen? amen? So when we talk about identity, when we talk about identity as a child of God, this is why you hear in your beloved church, you hear it all the time in Open Arms Community Church, this word, this word called beloved. Say it with me, beloved. beloved. See, you can either be loved, that's the world now, right? John 3, 16, for God so loved, right? The world. See, it's already done it. It's already paid. Right? Remember Golden Corral? It's already paid in full. But when you are at Golden Corral, eating, partaking in the blessings, seated at the table of our Heavenly Father, amen? amen. That the entree is blessing. The entree is healing. The entree is, hallelujah, restoration. The entree is breakthrough, amen? Oh, you want to know dessert on that? Okay, it's gooder and gooder, amen? Gooder and gooder. Can I get it? And this prophet came and told David, you know, messed up. 
I'm just telling you the Kentucky version. You done, you done messed up. Right? You done did it. And now, because you've opened the door to this evil, this is what's going to happen. And see, there's some of us that praise God for, you, for your stillness. There's some of you right now that is in deep reflection right now over your own life. Press through. Because all the Holy Spirit wants to do is shine His light and bless you with a breakthrough. And this is how God wants to bless you with this breakthrough that was written through David when he was going through such turmoil because of the deception of the evil one. Now remember, how did the enemy deceive David? He got lazy. The Bible said it. Read it. Read it. He was supposed to be with the kings in war. He's supposed to be in church, in fellowship, and he chose you guys to go, I'm going to stay home. And what did he do when he stayed home? Right? Why, why, why was David's eyes wandering? Why was David's eyes wandering? You see what happened? His relationship with God was already longer. Right? He knew where he was supposed to be in fellowship, in church, in worship. But what did he say? You guys go, I'm just going to stay here. And so he went to the rooftops and the idol is manifested. All it takes is a fraction of a second for this devil to get your attention. And isn't it amazing that as this devil got David's attention, David knows through his anointing that I can rebuke this and give praises to my living God. Amen? I can give praises. I can say my rebuke to the You have the power through Christ to stop all hell. Let me ask you again. What can come against the blood of God? Where is the blood of God in your life? Is Jesus Christ your Lord? Where does Holy Spirit live? Amen. So enough of this talk about this devil's doing this, this devil's doing that. I'll tell you what the devil's doing, running away in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So listen to what David said. David says this to God in complete repentance and confessing and just begging to God, crying out to God. Create in me a pure heart, O God. And renew a steadfast spirit in me. Do not cast me from your presence. Or take your Holy Spirit from me. Can you hear his cries right now? I pray you can. Can you feel it? Once again, Brother David is known in the Old Testament, Old Covenant, in all of the characters of the Holy Bible, the man after God's own heart. And here he is because he knows this. Connie, that what he done did, he messed up. And now he's telling God, oh please, don't, don't take me away from your presence. Please, don't remove your Holy Spirit from me, please. And then it continues on with this. Restore to me, say this with me, beloved family, the joy of your salvation. The joy of your salvation. I want, to, I, want to, I want to take a pause real quickly now. When we make our lives all about God, get ready. When we, when we make that choice, brother, praise Jesus. When we make that choice to make our lives, see, this is where, and I understand, this is where religion really tainted the church. This is where the devil's really deceived the church and deceived a lot of God's children. A lot of people, when they hear a brother say, when you make your life all about God, what the devil does is, well, that means I ain't going to have a life no more. That's a lie from the good of hell. When you make your life all about God, you will have a life that is beyond what you can possibly ever imagine. And it just keeps getting in Jesus' name. Amen? And I, I beg you that you will do that today. I pray that you will make this your way of life. That, Father, all I want to do is bless your Holy Spirit within me. Because, Father, I want you to live through me. Can I get an amen? amen. The joy of your salvation is bottom line salvation. Now listen. Did David say, restore to me the joy of my salvation? No. You notice that he said, restore to me the joy. He's so adorable. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Restore.
joy of your salvation. The power and magnitude and what God wants to bless you with in life-changing revelation is when you make your life all about Lord Jesus Christ, guess what? All of a sudden, your problems ain't your problems no more. All of a sudden, whatever the enemy is trying to do to you or your loved ones or your family, guess what? Lord Jesus, this is yours. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. Whenever something black lining up, you say, Oh God, I hear your God's word. Right now, I'm going to speak order. Right now, over your house in Jesus' name. Amen? amen. And I thank God for this life-changing revelation that when you focus on the joy of your salvation, what God is transpiring right here out of David's mouth in the Old Covenant, Old Testament, speaking of the Holy and the Only One, the True One, a God made Himself, that comes from the lineage of Brother David, is the joy of Lord Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen? If you can focus on Lord Jesus Christ, oh my goodness, how your life will be overflowing with enjoyment. Amen. How your life will be overflowing with bear fruit. Amen. Amen. Say with me, bear fruit. bear fruit. And grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Say this word with me, encouraging. Amen. This is what Holy Spirit does in a beloved child of God. This is what Holy Spirit does in you. You see, God is not a God who is distant and who is away. He lives in and through you. This is why Lord Jesus Christ came. You are no longer your own. See, I'm dealing with a lot of beloved children of God that say, yes, I received Lord Jesus Christ when I was 14, when I was 16, when I was 8, or when I was 30-something. And I say, okay, then what happened? Well, what do you mean what happened? It was a great moment. It was a great time. I know that I'm saved. Well, how are you saved? Well, I know that Lord Jesus Christ saved me because I received him. Well, what happened in your life? What happened in your life when you received Lord Jesus Christ? Because if you received Lord Jesus Christ, but yet you still live in darkness, there is something wrong. But when you live in Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, when you live in the anointing of giving thanks to God that He gave you His perfect Son to die for you, now get ready because now you're focused is consumed with His Spirit. Say His name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Living in you and through you. Amen. You see, there's going to be times, family, I wish I could tell you everything will be perfect, but no, it won't. But the glory of God is, is that when distractions come from the evil one, when you experience loss, when you experience heartache, when you experience suffering, a trial, this is why Lord Jesus Christ came. So that you would not focus so much on that temporary trial. You would focus on your eternal identity. Amen. That God, you love me. Amen. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. That Father God, even though I'm going through this right now, I know that you're for me. Amen? Say it with me, encourage it. Encourage. This is what Holy Spirit wants to do in your life, encourage it. Encourage you. Amen? Let's move on. Praise God. This Holy Spirit power is demonstrated in you and through you. Amen? Remember, He wants to flow through His Holy Church. How many of you right now feel the presence of Holy Spirit right now? Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Say with me, Agape. Amen. Who is Agape? Oh, hallelujah. All of heaven is filled in the overflow. When you say, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, He is our God. In John 16, 12, and 13 says this, I have much more to say to you, more than you can bear. Don't you love that bear? <laughs> say with me, bear fruit. Bear fruit. <laughs> I have so much more to say to you, more than you can bear. And this is where we're going to lead into, say this for me, forbearance. forbearance. Now, this word forbearance, I'm just going to say this, literally means holding back. Can you say that with me? Holding back. Holding back. Restraining. Holding back. You can feel it, right? I mean, holding back. Now, I, I need to speak in terms of biblical sense. Holding back is repentance. When you have repentance in your life, in a relationship with God Almighty as the Father, your natural self, your 
natural flesh wants to burn. What you say, right? You ever have those moments? What you say, right? You ever have any? Is it just me? Maybe I'm the only one there. Okay, I'll just, I'll just confess myself then. I have those moments where it's like, what did you just say, right? And you notice that my voice sounded like Mickey Mouse all of a sudden. Like, what did you, what did you just say? You know, like offense, right? And in the natural, <laughs> and in the natural, pride wants to go. This is what I am. Did you feel that? In pride, this is my right, and how dare you? Forbearance is, I know my identity in Christ, and that I am saved by the Holy Blood of God. I am a child of God. And that my own self is dead and gone, I am crucified in Christ. And Father God, you live in me. Amen. And Holy Spirit, as I reflect quickly in your presence in my life, I know what I want to do to defend myself. I know what I want to do to attack this person who's hurting me. But I surrender, God, in my identity as a beloved child, and I ask you, Lord, help me. And this is the peace of God that within you, I love that shirt, says, that peace of God that is in you, that Holy Spirit will say, don't say a word. I want you to pray for me. But I don't want to pray. Is that really how you feel? No, I'm sorry. And you find out that when you pray, you just feel agape overflowing. Amen. You feel the peace of the Father, and He reminds you what Lord Jesus Christ did when He was tortured. When they ripped the hair off of His face. See, that was me. I don't blame anybody for what I did to Lord Jesus. And see, I can stand up here and sweat through my clothes. But this is my personal relationship with God. I'm asking you, beloved child of God, have you got there yet? Have you gone there yet? Or is this is what I did to you, Lord? Or are you the type of child that says, look at what they did. I didn't do that to you. You see, this comes from the identity in our salvation, in agape. If you sit here today and you think that Jesus Christ is my Lord, but you ain't got nothing to do with my business, then guess what? You will have the fruit of that life. You will have the fruit of that life saying that, oh, well, I'm a Christian, but God, you don't live in me. But I have Jesus, but you don't live in me because I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to tell you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you get rid of that demonic thing. Because the devil's trying to deceive you to make you think that you are actually alone when God lives in you and through you. Can you hear an amen? amen? But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. We just discussed this. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. He will speak. Holy Spirit will only say to you what Father God says. Amen. 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 Because they are one. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Say it with me, agape. agape. God the Father, through the presence of Holy Spirit in your every breath. You know, one of the biggest things that I love speaking to youth right now, and I say this because praise God, Pastor Tish is here, and Pastor Mary, they, 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 they pastor our youth group, is one of the big awakenings for youth, teenagers, is when you just boldly tell them, do you think that you're breathing on purpose? What do you mean? Do you think that you purposely woke up this morning? And then I follow up. What happens when you stop breathing? But see, you notice that that word, that message right there, isn't just for you. It's for all of us in this room. So how beautiful is it that now that we can be thankful for every breath through His Holy Spirit, how will we affect 
effectively live this vapor of a life with the remainder of time that we have left on this earth? If we knew for sure that Lord Jesus Christ is coming back this afternoon at 5 o'clock, what would you do to put your life in order? If you knew Lord Jesus Christ that the trumpet's going to go off at 5 o'clock this evening, beloved child of God, what would you do? Would you still be on your Xbox playing video games? Huh? Would you still be scrolling on Facebook? I can't believe what she said. I don't know what Facebook said. Would you still be carrying out drama? Huh? All the Holy Spirit wants to do right now is say, will you get everything in order? Because I'm coming for you soon. Amen? In John 20, verse 19 to 23, this is where God wants to take us. Mary Magdalene came and she witnessed Lord Jesus Christ. And I hear your Bibles turning, praise God. I'm thankful you got your Bibles. If you're taking notes, take this note right here. Because we're not going to go all into the chapter. We're going to pick up after this encounter because Lord Jesus Christ told Mary, don't touch me. Right? Don't hold on to me because I'm not yet ascended to the Father. Right? But then he said, but go and tell the others. Go and tell the others. Right? And this is where we're going to pick up. I need you to get, a, get an idea as far as the condition of everybody's hearts and the fear that they were in. Because the disciples was in this room and they locked the door. And they locked the door because they were in fear. We're going to get into the word right now. On the evening of the first day of the week when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, can you imagine how scared they are? <clears throat> that they had to lock the door because they're like, Look, this is crazy. Our Lord Jesus Christ is dead. And now these leaders, these religious people, are after us. Lock the door. You see, I'm asking you right now, is there something that the devil has done in your life that caused you to be a prisoner in your heart or in your mind? You know what's amazing is that this COVID tried. This tactic from the devil, it's all Satan now, tried to lock God's children in houses, right? And glory to God, give God praise because here I am. Say with me, here I am. And give God praise and you say, no, I'm not going to be behind locked doors, amen? Let's give God praise, hallelujah.
Jesus Christ did for you. Look at what God Almighty, Agape, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Look at how much God loves you. And I love it because there's so many of you right now that's just so fixated looking in his eyes. And yes, even God knows right now what we're doing. The Holy Spirit in you. God right now is getting rid of things that doesn't belong in your life. Lord Jesus Christ showed them the nails. And of course, he showed them the side. And isn't it beautiful for Lord Jesus Christ to, to show them where he was pierced? Because as many of you know, when he was pierced, he was dead. Dead. Say that with me, dead. Yeah. But then here is God Almighty standing before the church. Right now, Lord Jesus Christ standing right here with us. Even gooder and gooder than that, you're like, how bold is that? And this is how bold it is. God in you. Amen. In me. God is saying, I was once dead, but now I'm alive. So the question that I have for you, beloved church family, as we approach the close of this message is, where are you right now in your relationship with God? Are you ready for this trumpet to sound? Yes. Amen? Amen? Are you ready for this trumpet to sound? Because I'm asking you this because for some of you right now, Holy Spirit's showing me. And I'm not going to look because I cannot look. But I'm telling you right now, there's some of you right now that you're like, well, I know He's coming, but I've been hearing this and I don't know really when and how. I'm going to ask you and I beg you in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Will you get right with God? Will you get right with God? Because what's amazing is that there's so many people right now saying, well, I've heard that all my life. What does that mean? Does that mean that you believe in your heart that he's not coming? Did you allow something to happen in your life that you know is not of God and now it's just, I just put up with it? Right now, Holy Spirit is examining every heart right now in this building. Because God loves you and He is for you. The beauty of our Father is if you just give it to Him at this altar, you just lay it down at His feet, He will bless you beyond comprehension and your life just gets gooder and gooder. Amen. So I ask you, why do you want to hold on to it? Amen? Will you let it go? Praise God. After He said this, He showed them His hands inside, saying, When He beloved, Amen. the disciples were overjoyed. When they saw the Lord, guess what? This word took place. Say with me, encouragement. Once again, when you worship Lord Jesus Christ and you are thankful, say with me, I am thankful. I am thankful. When you're thankful with God for what this one perfect man did for you, God will bless your life with overflow. But if you approach God with, this is what I need, this is what's wrong. I need this, I need that. Don't get me wrong. God wants to bless you and He will bless you. But where God is and what He paid for through Lord Jesus Christ is for Him to make changes in your life. God wants to make changes in your life where He can just shower you with His power and His anointing to flow and to renew your very thought, your mind. Again, Lord Jesus Christ, and peace be with you. The Father has sent me. I am sending you. And with that, Lord Jesus Christ breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And say this word with me, Agape. You see, here is Lord Jesus Christ. Walks into the locked room, right? Walks into the locked room. Ta -da, right? And here's Lord Jesus Christ showing himself to his disciples. And remember the condition of that room. Everybody was like, <laughs> either crying, right? Or, I just cannot believe, either mad, right? Or, what are we going to do? Or worry. This is what Holy Spirit is showing you right now. And this is his church disciples that walked with Lord Jesus Christ. 
love it. I just love the way he writes the book. Amen? It, it, the disciples in whom Jesus loved. And you you got to be pretty conceited about that, right? But guess what? He's just speaking blessings over his life. Right? How many of you right now can identify with God and say, God loves me the most? Spirit is our 
our teacher. Amen? Amen. So through everything that we went through, I asked Holy Spirit to tie everything in together because I just love the simple graphic of the bear food. <laughs> a bear there with a pineapple. This is so cute. And God says, I am. And this is what I ask you to be still about. And this is what we're going to close in. Galatians 5, 22, 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit, say in the name Holy Spirit. The fruit of Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Amen? Amen? This is the presence of God in your life. Is there any fruit from Holy Spirit that talks about being consumed with anxiety? That is from the devil, and God give you the power to rebuke that Amen. in Jesus' name. I'm going to tell you right now, the Holy Spirit give me the ability to speak this life over you, over His holy church. Amen? That if for any reason that you are one of these beloved children of God, that occasionally, or let's just say it's a common thing, that you struggle with anxiety, worry, or depression, I'm going to ask you that when this music comes on for the altar call, that you come and see me, and I'm going to lay hands on you, Holy Spirit will extinguish that fiery heart of the enemy. Amen. And again, amen. amen. Now remember, remember, what can come against the blood of Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Does that include anxiety? Yeah. Does that include worry? Yeah. Huh? Everything, right? Everything is covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So look at this real quick. When you know that your identity is in love, you are, say with me, beloved. say with me, I am, I am beloved. beloved. When you say, I am beloved, Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior, and the Father who sent Lord Jesus Christ, Father God Almighty, breathe His Spirit in me because Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Amen. That means that I don't breathe like any other person breathes. I breathe God Almighty. Amen, Amen Brother Ryan? I breathe God Almighty. Come on, stand up with me. Stand up with me. We're going to close and praise God. There's just some times we just need to fight through. Amen? Amen? We just need to fight through. Amen? There's some of us that got a butt cramp right now. Oh, well. There's some of you right now that got a calf in your leg. Maybe your leg's not feeling right. I don't know. But we're going to stand up for Jesus. Can I get it again? And as we stand up for Jesus, let's go on strong. Hallelujah. Let's go on strong. Say to me, I am beloved. I am beloved. You know that you identify yourself that God, you died for me through Christ. And I confess you, Lord Jesus, and I die in you. So the question I have for you, beloved church, open arms to me, church, God's holy church. We're holy because Jesus Christ is Lord and Holy Spirit lives in every one of us. Amen. Did you die already? Yes. May I see your face or say it out loud? This is a confession. Listen, I'm not playing games no more. I'm not. If this trumpet goes off, I pray every one of us go. Amen. Do you want to come? Let me just give that prayer. I pray every one of us go. I pray you're not. In Jesus' name, did you die already? Yes. yes. Next, joy. Remember, restore to me, Lord, the joy of your salvation. Who is our salvation? Say his name. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When you know this, you are saved. And this is the beginning of the encouragement in every beloved child of God. This is what's so encouraging being a Christian. This is what's so encouraging about being able to say, Jesus Christ is my Lord. You know why? No matter, Sister Heaven, no matter what the devil tries to do or come at you, all you do is say, Jesus Christ is my Lord. You have no voice. You cannot speak to me in Jesus' name. Can I hear you?
that this world tries to deceive us in. This is a piece of his breath that now breathes in you. Say his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. So when we know that the Father sent Lord Jesus Christ in that locked room. Remember? Ta -da! Lord Jesus Christ, right? And Lord Jesus Christ completes, completes agape, and he breathes the peace. And he breathes that peace, and Holy Spirit flows through everybody who is receptive. See, we took that breath of agape, amen? Say it with me, agape. Agape. Last but not least, forbearance. 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 Remember, forbearance literally means holding back. Forbearance means I'm not my own. So I can't act like I used to. How many of you truly believe that right now? That you're not your own. That you belong to a master. That his name is God Almighty and he's for you and he loves you. That no matter what you go through, no matter what you're struggling with, no matter what your skin color is, no matter what your nationality, your education, it doesn't matter to God. You are his beloved child. You are the apple of his eye. You are his masterpiece. He is for you and he loves you. And it's in this identity, it's in this identity as a beloved child of God that the encouragement comes from heaven because the God may is manifested within which allows you to repent in every area of your life, to submit and surrender to the Holy One and allow His presence to flow. Amen? Amen. And beloved church family, this is the reason why God called this message bear fruit. Because in this bear, after repentance, is when the fruit of Holy Spirit starts to overflow. Say that word with me, overflow. overflow. Starts to overflow in your life. You see, what happens far too often in children of God is that we try to be kind. We try, right? We try to be kind to others. We try to be faithful. We try to be nice to everybody, right? But if we don't have this first in bare fruit, if we don't have our identity solid, that I am a beloved child of God, amen, and that I am encouraged in every breath, because I don't breathe on my own no more, I have the eternal breath of God Almighty. Guess what? So what happens when addiction tries to present itself to you? Hallelujah. Right? That has no power. Right? You may have friends or family that say, well, this is what you used to do. Yeah, but it's dead and gone. Amen. 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 Crucified. Woo! Send them to crucify. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is bare fruit. Amen. Amen. I want to pray. Remember, if you're if you're struggling with anything, you need healing on your body. I'm going to ask Pastor John and the elders to come up, please. If you feel that, come up. Praise God. We have one song. Amen? We have one song. That's all it takes. It doesn't even take the song in Jesus' name. Amen. The Word of God says, the written Word of God says, call upon the elders. And it's through the anointing of the Holy Spirit that when we pray over you, God will rebuke anything that does not belong to him in Jesus' name. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we plead your blood, Lord Jesus Christ, and Father God, pastor and elders are right here, Father God, that you've orchestrated, Lord Jesus. Father God, in your name, Lord Jesus Christ, the name above every name, we bind up every demonic principality. And Father God, as we plead your blood, we thank you, Heavenly Father, that nothing can come against you. And Father God, right now we just declare healing breakthrough, restoration over your holy church. Holy Spirit, we bless your presence and we thank you, Father. That as we step into this, this one song, Father God, that we know, Lord Jesus Christ, you've already done the perfect work in every one of us. So, Father, I just thank you that you charge all your angels over every soul, every ear that has ears to hear, Father, that your angels go before us, push people far, far, far away from us, Father God. And destroy the plots of the enemy. And 
and it's in Jesus Christ's holy and precious name and all God's beloved said, Amen. Amen.